um, I want to shift a little bit to Afghanistan, uh, which is an area that's much in the news and has been for a long time. And this is Afghanistan. And it's important because it shares borders with Iran and Pakistan and the old Soviet Union. Uh, so um, it wasn't an area that that the US really had much interest in throughout really in the post-World War II era, right? It wasn't really that important. Uh, the government there was led by this guy named Daoud, who was, you know, kind of pro-American, but, you know, whatever. Um, um, and then Iran began to fund, um, I'm sorry, but Daoud was, was kind of close to the Soviet Union, not really a, a communist country or anything, but he got aid and, you know, from the Soviet Union. So Iran, America's ally, began to try to get rid of the Daoud government, all right? And they sent anti-government you know, forces there, and they, you know, they, they offered a aid. And um, so Daoud joined on with Iran and began to attack. This sounds, it's somewhat complex. So again, you can put down your pen and listen to it because it's kind of a good story if you're into like spy stories and stuff like that, political, you know, geo, geopolitics and things like that. It's, it's, it's kind of a good story. So um, the government in Afghanistan, led by this guy named Daoud, began to wipe out the Communist Party in Afghanistan. It's really hardcore repression, just bloody killing them, right? Now, because you got to make it more complicated, there were two different groups of communists in Afghanistan. The government was going after both of them, but those two communist groups were very different. One was pretty extremist, kind of a hardcore communist group uh, led guy, by a guy named Hafizul Amin. Don't worry about it. The other was more moderate, and it was led by a guy named Barbrak Karmal. Don't worry about it, all right? Um, in 1978, the Afghanistan communists joined the Air Force, <laughs> and they overthrew the Daoud government. And the Soviet Union had nothing to do with this coup. But in 1978, there's a new government in Afghanistan led by this pretty hardcore communist group uh, run by Hafizullah Amin. And they were, they were rough, all right? So... Uh, Amin initially had plans to like, you know, modernize the country, land reform, give uh, women the right to vote, give girls the right to have an education, stuff like that. But uh, he put them in the place very heavy handedly, you know, very kind of violently. And um, then uh, people turned on him. And so Amin began to repress the moderate communists the same way Daoud had. So you have these extremist communists led by Habizullah Amin attacking, repressing, and killing these moderate communists whose party was led by Barbara Karmal. Simple, right? All right. So there's huge turmoil in Afghanistan as two communist groups are fighting against each other. That's, those are the two choices in Afghanistan. You have this communist government, which is really hardcore, and then you have this opposition communist group, which is more moderate, right? The Soviet Union is trying to stay out of it because they don't want to get involved in this region. Uh, they wanted the Amin government, which was communist, to chill out, to stop this repression, to stop killing people, right? Um, but um, it became more complicated because amid this civil war in Afghanistan between two communist groups, young Muslims who called themselves Mujahideen, again, started to come in and fight in Afghanistan, and a lot of people in the army, a lot of soldiers in the army began to mutiny and desert and join them, right? So now the Soviet Union is kind of more alarmed because Afghanistan is on the border, it's a buffer zone, and Pakistan and Iran are enemies, so the Soviet Union now says, we gotta do something because this is getting out of hand. You have these crazy communists, as they refer to them, you know, Habizul Amin, killing these moderate communists, Barbara Karmal, and now you have these Muslims and these army, you know, deserters who are joining in, and, and it's just getting really out of, out of hand. So um, uh, the Soviet Union, you know, still around at the time, met at first, they said, you can't do anything. We can't send troops in, right? But um, the Mujahideen were getting stronger. So now the problem wasn't just the crazy communist government, but it was also these Islamic Mujahideen who are getting involved, which the Soviet Union doesn't, doesn't, that fears, right? Because those Mujahideen are on the same side as Pakistan, which is a Soviet enemy, right? That's why I said, put your pen down, don't worry about it, right? Um, the U.S. doesn't want to do anything militarily, but 
Uh, Pakistan is starting to give more support, which means weapons, to the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. And then, in July of 1979, Jimmy Carter, who was the president, began to send money and military equipment to the Mujahideen who were fundamentalist Muslims. So the United States now is on the same side as the fundamentalist Muslims, the Mujahideen, who are trying to overthrow the government in Afghanistan, all right? The U.S. aid came before the crazy communist government began wiping everybody out. So the Americans got involved early during the Hafizullah Amin time as president. He just wanted to get rid of that government in Afghanistan very early. This was when Jimmy Carter was president. Now, Jimmy Carter's, because so the Soviet Union finally sent troops in. Around Christmas Day, 1979, the Soviet Union had enough. So it sent troops in against the communist government. The Soviet Union sent in troops to get rid of the communist government, led by Hafizullah Amin, and hopefully put into power the more moderate communist government led by Barbrock Kermal, all right? Now, the United States increased its aid. Uh, Jimmy Carter's main advisor was a guy named Zbigniew Brzezinski. And Brzezinski thought that if the United States kept sending aid to these Muslim fundamentalists, then the Soviet Union would have to come in, which is what happened. And this is a, this is a, a, a brief clip uh, was a big enough Brzezinski going to uh, the Afghan Pakistan border and talking to these uh, Mujahideen. U.S. National Security Advisor Brzezinski flew to Pakistan to set about rallying resistance. He wanted to arm the Mujahideen without revealing America's role. On the Afghan border near the Khyber Pass, he urged the soldiers of God to redouble their efforts. We know of their deep belief in God, and we are confident that their struggle will succeed. That land over there is yours. You'll go back to it one day, because your fight will prevail, and you'll have your homes and your mosques back again, because your cause is right, and God is on your side. All right. You know what? Let me let me check something here because I don't know if I had the volume on. Uh, I did. Okay, good. Uh, um, that's really striking. So you have this American National Security Advisor, big shot, right? With Jimmy Carter's, you know, at Jimmy Carter's direction, going there and telling these fundamentalist Muslims that those homes, those land, those are yours, and you're going to win. You're going to get that land back because God is on your side. So the United States is on the same side as fundamentalist Muslims, all right? In Iran, those fundamentalist Muslims put Khomeini in power and took Americans hostage. In Afghanistan, those very same Mujahideen, Islamic fundamentalists, were receiving millions of dollars, ultimately billions of dollars of support, surface-to-air missiles, stinger missiles from the United States, right? So uh, in, in, in Iran, the United States is opposed and trying to get rid of and, and supporting Iraq in a war against uh, fundamentalist Muslims. In Afghanistan, the United States is supporting and giving money and weapons to these fundamentalist Muslim groups, these Mujahideen. All right? Make sense? Now, ultimately, what this is going to do uh, to kind of, uh, you know, a quick is the Soviet intervention against the Amin government worked. So Barbara Kermal did take over the moderate communists, but the American aid, and you know, not just the United States, but Pakistani and others, continued. And so ultimately what happened in Afghanistan was that um, the fundamentalist Muslim groups, initially supported by the United States, took over and became the Taliban. And then some of these uh, Mujahideen in Afghanistan formed their own organization called Al-Qaeda, which included... Osama bin Laden, right? So in, in the 1980s then, the United States, well, the 70s, so on, on one hand, the United States is trying to get rid of 
Khomeini and the fundamentalist Muslims in Iran, and it supports Saddam Hussein in a war throughout the 1980s against Iran with, with a ton of uh, military aid and money, and it was there when Iraq was using chemical weapons. Right? So the U.S. hates fundamentalist Muslim government in Iran, supports Saddam. In Afghanistan, the United States uh, supports the Islamic fundamentalist group against the Afghan government. They win, and they become terrorist groups opposed to the United States, all right? And this is often known as blowback. If you ever heard that term, I've used it before, right? You do something like support Saddam or support uh, the Mujahideen, which become Al-Qaeda, and it blows back against you. And that's clearly what happened, and that would lead to um, the first Gulf War, and then what we often refer to as the terror era. The first Gulf War has 